Hi guys, this is Rashid and you are watching Step by Step Robotics. So today I would like to show you one of the robot parts that I had designed for a long time ago and that is the robot gripper. So I got a design challenge from my boss that we would like to have some of the robot gripper for harvesting a fruits or a vegetable or grab some object like a trash or bottle. It's pretty much like the general purpose gripper. So the first rule that I got is we're gonna use only one servo for the power grip motion. And I think that is not that a problem. We can try use only one servo for that. And the second rule is the design must be able to made from the CNC machine or laser cutter or the machine that we have in the factory. So if the design requires a special machine to make, I think that is not a good design. And it sounds quite reasonable. And the last one is no gears, no linear joint or linear support and the design must be as simple as possible. So that's a little bit tricky because the, most of the gripper they need some kind of the gears or the warm gear. So if you try to google it quickly like the okay two fingers gripper and let's check on the image so you will see that most of the actuator requires the linear actuator and this is also the linear actuator or yeah this is the kind of the lead screw and some of the pneumatic style gripper for the power grip. So it took me like a week to research and figure it out what kind of mechanism I'm gonna use. But finally, I came out with this guy. So this is the two fingers gripper with only one servo and the fingers, both fingers are moving in parallel. So from the overview, the linkage structure looks pretty much like the one in the market. But the thing is, there is no linear joint or gears or slider at all. These are purely rotational joint which comes from the bearing and tightened together with the M3 screw. And all these parts are just the aluminum and carbon plates that we can make from CNC and the laser cutter. So let's see how I designed this guy and what is the mechanism inside. Okay, so here we are at the SolidWorks. So first I would like to show you the idea behind the scripper. So let's me bring it to here. Okay, so you will see it's a little bit messy, uh, the dimension here. I'm not sure the proper way to do the kinematics analysis, but this is the way I do it. Um, I just made a sketch and I defined the dimension of the linkage and I just constrain the joint as I want and I adjust the dimension until I feel happy with it and then I start to draw the parts. So. It's just a simple kinematics analysis and I maybe I never worked on a real massive machine before So this should be like the simple uh, prototype and it should be enough So let me know how do you guys do it and leave it in the comment So my target actuator is the Robotis Dynamixo XM430 um, There are many cool features that you can play around with the servos for the gripper, I'm gonna use the current base position control. So it means we still can control the position, but when the torque or the current reach the target, the servo's position will not move more than that. And that is the good things for the application like gripper. So you can control the grip force not to break the things. Okay, so as far as I know, if you want to linkage, to move the same time and same motion like when one move one also move um, let's imagine about the umbrella when you open an umbrella 
all the linkage insides are moving in the same time and same motion by just push one of the linear slider inside there. So there must be one linear motion that to make things happen like that. And that is what we want for the parallel grip of the gripper. But as the rule said, we cannot use the linear joint or the linear support or even a gear to design this thing. So I found out an interesting mechanism which is like more than 200 years ago and it's called Watts Linkage. And this is the full bar linkage as you can see here, the green, blue, and another green, and the ground bar. So if you look at this point P, you can see that there is a straight line path that we can use and we can constrain the motion of this joint and not to make it go over than this range. So we can use the advantage of this straight line motion of this point P from this mechanism. Okay, so this is the dynamics of servos and these three links is the watt linkage. So when the servo horns is moving like this, you can see that the middle point of this link, which is this one, can move in a straight line on this dash line. Like this. So I can connect this point as another joint to this linkage and also this linkage to drive both fingers in the same time and it will move in parallel as you can see. So after I got the motion as I want and the dimension is quite reasonable and here is the final version of my grippers here. Okay, so first let me make it transparent and also this aluminum parts. Okay, so you can see the servos and the linkage inside. So here this is my watts linkage that can perform the approximate straight line motion. So when I drive the servo here, you can see both fingers are driving and it moves in parallel like this. So as you can see that at some point the left fingers start to go over than the right fingers and yeah we can limit the motion of the servo as this point or it may be not a problem because this is the open gripper so when it closed it's still uh, have the parallel grip but when it's released like open the gripper one side can be go over than the another side that might be not a problem at all I think and yeah this is how it looks like from the side to side so I also have the another length like this one is the medium length and this one is the long length and the uh, different is just the carbon plates of these fingers so the body part is still same for all of the types and there's only the carbon plates that change yeah so it's pretty much flexible to design this thing just changing the carbon plates and all of the aluminum parts are, can still reuse to another as well and this is how I designed these things. Of course, before this final version, there are many iterations before it. And this is probably like the fourth version of the whole. And in the future, we can modify it anyway, according to each task. So let's see how I assemble this guy and let's do some tests.
okay so here we are we're gonna do some tests of this gripper so now we have this short length medium length and the long length so you might have seen my videos about the chestnut picker at that time i'm using the medium length gripper but the finger trip is a little bit different so i just want to show you that we can like redesign and modifying stuff on this gripper to match for your object and whatever you want to do yeah for example like i'm gonna use this tpu material for the soft grip instead of this solid carbon plate so first let's test with this uh, short length gripper at first and let's first scan this actuator Okay, I'm gonna use my own arms instead of the robot arm because I want to test just only the gripper So it would not be that complicated <laughs> Just use like this Okay, uh, okay, let's try grab this From vertical Yeah, as you can see it can grab and release And let's try to grab this measuring tape this is a little bit um, not uniform object, but I think we can grab these as well. Yeah, like this. Release. Also, we can do the horizontal grip from, by grabbing this can. Grab it more. Yeah, as you can see, it also adapts itself. Release. Okay, let's try to grab it one more time. Yeah, something like this. Okay, it's also possible to grab some little object like this aluminum parts. Okay, let's try to grab it again. Yeah, as you can see here. One more time. Yeah, it's totally fine. And the force is quite enough. Okay, cool. So let's try to change to the medium length gripper and let's see how it's going to perform when we use the TPU material instead of the rigid gripper. Okay, let's grab some object like maybe these tools. Yeah, these tools. Do some vertical grip. Yeah, you can see that we can grip it without any loose contact. Okay, let's try some bigger object like this pet bottle. Let's grab just only the fingertips of this gripper and let's see. Yeah, you can see that even just the fingertips, it also grab quite good. Okay, release. How about just the cap? Yeah, this is good enough. I can pour. <laughs> So I also print this camera bracket for the RealSense D435. So I can show you that um, we can do some object detection from this camera and this RealSense camera gonna give us the depth information of the object that it detects. So we can control the robot arms to grab more precise from this camera. So first let me show you the object detection parts. 
But yeah, um, for now, I'm gonna run the human detection, which is gonna detect me, and it's gonna um, give the depth image as well. Okay, so here we are. So this is from the D4 25 cameras and we can know how much depth of this uh, gripper or the robot arm should go. And yeah, by just using the center of this box. And again, we can try to uh, retrain the neural network to detect something else. For example, I did with the chestnut picker. So let's try grab this shell first. Yeah, so it's gonna be like this and lace. Let's try grab the one without the shell, two in the same time. Yeah, so this is the reason why I made this fingertips a little bit wider because even it's not perfectly on the spot, it can still grab some object around it. And that is for today's videos, the two finger grippers. So if you like my Robot Journeys videos, please press like button. And if you want to see more of these, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you soon.